Teresa, 45. Rebecca, 44. Lisa, 41. Kata, 38. Maggie, 45. Molly, 38. Josie, 60. Katie, 44. Claire, 34. Manta, 40. Marsha, 66. Welcome to Interwoven Spring and Summer Season of 2022. This podcast is dedicated to women taking control of middle life's narrative through story and conversation. Each episode will bring you inspiration, information, and community surrounding topics relevant to middle life. This episode features stories from Interwoven's founders, Teresa Kopak and Rebecca Jankowski. Remember to hit subscribe so that you can keep building community with us here every new episode. And please visit our website to subscribe to our newsletter and to access more resources at interwoven.com. That's I-N-T-E-R-W-O-V-X-N.com. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Teresa. So I'm so excited we're here. Episode one, who are we? What are we doing? Why are we doing it? Yeah, Teresa, why don't you start and tell everyone a little bit about yourself? I am Teresa. I am 45. I'm a Sagittarius. My love language is words of affirmation, which I just realized recently after you suggested I look into that, and I'm glad you did. I'm a mom to a sparkling seven-year-old daughter. I'm a wife, daughter, sister, friend, and I'm also a matrescence practitioner and postpartum doula, a former birth doula as well. Yay. I love that. Teresa, for those that don't know what matrescence is, can you just give a quick snapshot? Yeah, it's um, the conversation about the bridge into motherhood. We have been under this impression that you become a mother at the point of birth, and that's actually not true. It's a much longer process that involves identity changes, physiological changes, neurological changes. It's fascinating and deep and wide and has a lot of conversation in it. And I I love doing that and exploring that with women. That's fantastic. And I know we've talked a lot about how that can then translate to sort of those later transitions in life with perimenopause and menopause and all sorts of things, which we're excited to get into with this project. I will say, Teresa, if I can say a few things about you too, that you have always been one of the biggest cheerleaders and supporters of me and of the women that have come into your life and circle. And you have this amazing ability to hold space for others. So that for me when I think of Teresa that is what I think of (laughs) oh thanks Rebecca (laughs) well let's hear about you talk about you for a sec yeah so it's always interesting for me I never really know how what to start with and how to lead right so I am a wife and a mother to a four-year-old daughter and I am a women's health acupuncturist, board certified in reproductive acupuncture and fertility and pregnancy. And then what feels like another lifetime ago, did my undergrad in photography. And so my daughter commonly will ask me what I want to be when I grow up. And I say an artist, but really all of those pieces for me are sort of what I love and my world, I guess. I am 44. I'm a Taurus and my love language is acts of service. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Well, also about you, one of the things that I loved, so we met when we were both at your business that you created, Orchid, taking care of women, doing acupuncture, seeing them through (laughs) fertility and pregnancy and beyond. And while I would work in the office with you, I loved witnessing the way that you supported women when they were going through these various pivotal moments in their lives. And it made me so proud to know you and be a part of your orbit. I just, I I absolutely admired and adored that about you. And in working now, continuing our work into Interwoven, um, one of the things that I need you for is you are such a grounding force. You help me see the dot on the horizon and stay focused on it because I can get rather big picture and fluid and, you know, like staying open to the voices and the possibilities, but you help me keep the framework around all of that. Like you, you're like, be free to be you, Teresa. That's great. But in order to move this forward, here's the framework that we need. And that is our goal on the horizon. 
And I just, I love that about our working relationship that we just have that natural balance to keep each other inspired and, and motivated. Like it's just, just so beautifully naturally there. That's amazing. And I feel a little geeky because I just got really excited about the word framework. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I do. um, I love all of those beautiful pieces and I do love me some framework and maybe it's because sometimes I feel like I can't always stay within the framework, but I like the possibility of it and the structure that it may offer. (laughs) So speaking of interwoven, yeah. Let's let's talk about why interwoven. Why are we doing this? Our our ambitions with this with this business. Absolutely. So for me, and I think I also speak for you. I love supporting women, and I love hearing their stories. I think, especially with the pandemic, I've missed those small group discussions that happen around a meal or a drink or one of the other outings that I used to take for granted. And now even just going shopping with a girlfriend or whatever the case feels a little distant or not the same as it used to be. And with the work I do, I also feel strongly that all women should have access to trusted resources for support and information when it comes to their health and hormones and the transitions that come with being a woman over the age of 35. I know we've talked about that a lot and whether it's perimenopause or motherhood or trying to get pregnant over 35 and suddenly realizing you've been labeled advanced maternal age. You know, it's just having a space to have conversations and to connect women and just enjoy sort of the beauty of story and of hearing the things that other people have gone through and knowing that you can go to this space and place and find some commonality or find support or find a resource. I think for me, the core of Interwoven has always really been connection, legacy, identity and our changing bodies, really, because being 44 and realizing that for a lot of us, all of these stages are sort of converging, right, for me has been really powerful and trying to figure out how to navigate that piece. Certainly the pandemic has amplified our need for connection, you know, given the negative effects of a lot of standard social media apps that are out there. You know, we've talked about other ways of exploring meaningful connection and conversation without just sort of, you know, the 10 second sort of post to get likes or whatever the case is. And I suppose for me, the legacy piece, more than a decade ago when I was working in the cancer care area of the hospital here, a woman came in and talked about legacy letters. That for me has always been a sticking point because... How do we kind of create living legacy? What do we want our ideal life to look like? And how do we try and identify that here and now and live that life versus just reflecting on it at the end of our life? Yeah. And then identity, I think, again, that convergence of all of those things. For me, I think, like I said, I often tell my daughter, I want to be an artist when I grow up. But really, that's sort of always part of my identity. But it's a journey and a process of figuring out where it's at. You know, I think for years, because starting an acupuncture practice, my practice was my baby really for all intents and purposes for 10 years. And then I transitioned it to another provider who's amazing. That was sort of just what I was used to leading with and what my identity was. But really, I think I've grieved and want to get back to that part of me that is a photographer. And then on top of that, you add now being a mother and how does that fit into it? And you sort of have this space between yourself and your child and wanting to have your own identity while also being the mother that you want to be or the wife you want to be or the daughter you want to be or friend. And so kind of just trying to figure out how to fit all of those puzzle pieces together. And what does that then look like? Who am I, right? And for me with this project, having discussions with other women, because I really realized that the world that I have lived in and the vantage point I have had from that space is a really narrow view. And so again, I love talking to women and hearing stories and learning about their ideas of identity, you know, being sort of a white cisgendered straight woman married with a child. I don't have 
the experience that a lot of other women have, having more conversations with all different women about their lives and about their identity and how they're experiencing, let's say, the transition to menopause through the what can be a 10-year period of perimenopause. And so that is all for me, I guess, sort of what is exciting about Interwoven and the possibilities of these conversations. And of course, our changing bodies, like holy cow, changing bodies, you know, as someone who struggled with fertility myself and then struggled with breastfeeding and then kind of four years out of it now, smack dab into perimenopause, certainly. It's like, you know, this condensed sort of period of all of these stages that for my mom were really spread out. And as a healthcare provider who works with women in that space, how to help support and facilitate as you do with matrescence that transition. Through the work that we do and seeing women at pivotal points in their lives, we're, one of the major things we're seeing are these significant identity shifts. And they're identity shifts that are without instructions and often without conversations. And we're supposed to do it seamlessly. So there's a lot of stress and pressure there. And we're all different. We're all wired differently. So whether it plays out like an avalanche or it's small cracks in the surface, every woman experiences it. And this time that, you know, 35 to, you know, like 55 plus, that is a major transition time when it comes to our physiology and our identities creating a, a safe place for people to have conversations around this. And like you said, learn more about the experiences of people outside of our, our own immediate experiences. Like that is a part, a beautiful part of life, of, of experiencing this life. It's being able to share that with others and get new perspectives. So I, you know, I'm excited to have the space where women will inspire each other and broaden their horizons and perspectives together, but also looking to create a, a place that's stabilizing and centering because our ambition with interwoven is to provide this information along with these shared experiences that ground us in this time, that this information is going to create greater understanding that leads to greater compassion for ourselves. And when we have that compassion for ourselves, we have it for others too, you know, and a piece of that understanding is enjoyment. <laughs> like you could enjoy your life again with, with greater understanding and compassion about what you're going through. And we're not saying that because we're here and we're doing this, that, you know, every day of our lives is a picnic, you know, sometimes it sucks, but understanding what's going on and having perspective on it and knowing how to care for yourself through those challenging times keeps us from falling into that deep hole that can be hard to climb out of. We've all gotten really in touch with, I think, that deeper side, that darker side over the last two years. I would really love to help create and foster a sense of satisfaction with ourselves in our lives. I believe that comes from a deeper relationship with ourselves and making time for that to happen can be a really tall order. And just the idea of making time in a hectic life or when you're in a lower place can be deterrent enough from, from even starting. Through Interwoven, I want to make that feel easier, that we can provide the inspiration and the information to get things started. Because middle life is a fascinating time. There's this convergence happening and Interwoven is going to dive into that X that marks the spot in that phase of our lives. The physiological changes, the identity shifts, our various roles, staying grounded in ourselves to move through what's to come. And all of that grounds me, this work that we're doing, but it's also so exciting because it's an opportunity to create a more complete and complex person who's really invested in this life. And, you know, and I, I've become more aware of how temporary this life is. It makes sense that this time, this middle life, is when humans experience that existential crisis of our limited time on this planet. So a, a reflection point happens when we reach this time in our lives and we've crossed lines of either achievement or we haven't crossed those lines of achievement yet as we expected. We've started families, we're caring for aging parents, we see ourselves and our not too distant futures in them. While we're trying to make sense of all of this and stay grounded in our lives and our present, we're also receiving messages about our diminished value as women at this time in our middle lives. 
you know, I'm here trying to experience and understand the physiological roller coaster of middle life. Like my hormones are doing somersaults again, but really when have they not? It's been a monthly occurrence since I was 13. I've decided at this point in my life, I want to better understand all of that for myself and be able to communicate it to my daughter so that she can compassionately care for herself through all of her phases. You know, I want to be here to be a flawed but stable role model for her. And I want a deeper relationship with myself. I can't wait to also listen to the conversations from our podcast guests. And I think our our newsletter will be a vehicle for that with stories and food and music and self-care ideas and more. That gets me so excited. And for me, this is a great way to spend my time on earth. We want for everyone to be able to find their space in that conversation. Thank you for your presence here with us today. We invite you to keep coming back and to weave your story into legacy. Subscribe now and visit interwoven.com to subscribe to our newsletter and for more resources. This show's copyright is May of 2022. We want to thank our sponsors and affiliates, as well as our producers, Teresa Kopak, Rebecca Jankowski, and Jennifer Gilmore of Soundport Studios. All music for the podcast was written and performed by Gina Barrington.